Here we are at the train tunnel. Alien in the Train Tunnel is a psychological thriller that takes place in the desert, um, or deserts, in Utah. The desert is a character in this film, a major character. Without the desert, this film, there is no film. <laughs> the inspirations behind the film come from well, my love for films that were shot in the desert, whether it's, you know, Utah, uh, Nevada, Arizona, California. Um, a lot of my favorite films were shot in desert environments. Press record and get in the truck, let it idle for a minute. This is a mood film, so I'm just taking all my favorite moods from my favorite films, whether it's a David Lynch film, whether it's a Robert Harmon film, or a John Dahl film. Um, it's all, you know, these are all kind of obscure directors. Um, but pretty much how I see it is I'm just taking my favorite bits, and by bits I mean mood, and putting them all together and calling it Alien in the Train Tunnel. Action. After you say, you know, Jack, there you are, what are you doing out here? You know, be natural, don't, not too, you know, Go slow with it. Oh, there you are, Jack. What are you doing out here? You know what I mean? Kind of odd. Right. Get it back. But I like, I like this from, from that end. I want to shoot it from that end. I don't like this end. Since I've been wanting to do this film for so many years, of course, it's gone through a lot of rewrites. And uh, it had a major rewrite about six months ago. Um, I couldn't cast certain roles that were crucial to well you know the original story so i had to just scrap it and rewrite you know build a whole new foundation for the film and actually um i feel that that was a almost a blessing in disguise even though it was very stressful you know there's a lot of sleepless nights that come with this um and that's when the ideas tend to bombard me. It's not, you know, it's not like I can just sit down and, all right, let's think. What, what do we got today? What kind of ideas do we have? It doesn't work like that. They come at you at 3 a.m. when you're lying in bed. I'm not really uh, one to write my ideas down, which uh, Steve Baker, uh, who plays Jack Moss, he gives me a lot of a lot of shit for that. Write it down. You got to write it down. <laughs> and I just I'm just not in the habit of doing that. It I just store it, you know. Um which is probably not the ideal thing to do. I should probably take Steve's advice and write these ideas down, but the point being the ideas just come when you least expect them they'll just they'll just hit you and some of them can seem like well how the fuck am i going to make that work but i love the idea so much that i'll make it work you have to massage it into place with all the other ideas so it's not like i i'm sitting down and writing a script and and a screenplay here these are just a chain of ideas that I am massaging into place to make it work, to make it somewhat cohesive. And that was the big struggle. 
um, until more ideas came and then, you know, you get all your ducks in a row and uh, you're golden. So that's, that's where we're at. Take it from peering in without the light and then turn the light on and then come in. Okay. Slow. Yes, sir. Here we are at the breakdown gas station. And uh, Natalie Morning, one of the producers of this film, just gave me a gift. She and Mark are walking around somewhere. I don't see them, but uh, I wanted to show you this. Uh, I wanted to show you the gift that they just gave me. All right. That is the soundtrack to one of my favorite films, which was, well, there's a scene that was filmed, well, actually, right there. Kurt Russell was standing right there. Music is so very important in any film. It actually can make or break the film, in my opinion. If you have a, a great soundtrack, man, it just glues everything together. For example, like uh, Mark Isham's soundtrack for the Hitcher film, probably my all-time favorite film soundtrack, really. But for for this film, I hired uh, the Rose Phantom to, I liked some of his work, um, some of his instrumental work. <laughs> and uh, I thought he had the right idea of how to sonically represent a landscape. It's the perfect marriage to have the Rose Phantom do the music to this, uh, since I know that he's also obsessed with the desert. So it's like, you know, you got two guys obsessed with the desert. Um, Let's collaborate. And so far, the, the music is actually what is going to glue this film together. Um, and also the music is what has kept the inspiration going. It just makes my ideas that much more powerful when I'm listening to some of these samples that, that uh, Rose Phantom sends me. So yeah, music's very important. And without music, this film is nothing. Uh, I, I know that sounds maybe harsh, but it's true. That's how important the music, this basically it's, I could say, this is a, uh, we could safely probably say this is a glorified music video, really, because the film has very little dialogue. Um, and we're, we're just following one character throughout this uh, journey. Um, and those are all my favorite kind, kinds of films. You know, I don't like films where there's all these characters. You know, I like films based around one character. And, and just, you know, even if they're just doing daily things, that's a movie I want to see, you know. <laughs> If the, if the environment is on point and the music's on point, I could almost watch anything. It doesn't even have to have any, you know, I don't need to be stimulated with action scenes or anything. I could just watch somebody walk down this road here. We're in an, uh, you know, the perfect environment and apply the perfect music, you know, the point I'm making is you can get away with a lot if you apply the right music and you're in the right environment to begin with. You can get away with so many things. And uh, that's, well, that's my goal here is to try and get away with, with this story that I've, you know, conjured up from God knows where. You just wanna 
Give it a nice rub down. Think about where I want the camera. And then after 10 seconds or so, you're gonna close it like you're determined, like you're gonna go, you're gonna go yeah. steal the, the spear. Gotcha. I'm gonna come in here with you. No! I know. <laughs> no. We're playing grab ass. Yeah. No farting. <laughs> no farting. <laughs> but don't immediately do it. Don't immediately be like, no, I won't. You know, I won't. you just turn around. I won't. And then kind of look up and then do that. Like. It's your first time in Moab, huh? It's the very first time ever. Nice. Hopefully not the only time. Well, this is uh, Natalie Morning, one of the producers of the film. <laughs> I'm thankful to have Natalie Morning as a producer of this film because it's hard to find people that can, that can help you. And of, co of course, this is, you know, all coming out of out of my pocket and there's there's not a big crew or anything like that um, so basically I'm like trying to do something that's almost impossible um, but because I'm by myself pretty much you know I have to be everybody I have to be the director I have to be the DP you know uh, <laughs> scouting locations uh, you know uh, sound design um, everything. It's hard to do everything by yourself, but I'm almost used to it. I've been doing it for so long. So I, I hope I can pull such a big project off because this is, this is the most important project I've, you know, I'm attempting here <laughs> to pull off the biggest project yet. You immediately come out of nowhere, you know, just ripping around that corner. Right there, that's where all this is taking place, and you're just like, but that's where you're looking. Okay. And then you're just you're peeking. Give me a, give me a lot of uh, a lot of peeking over the railing, lots of that, like, okay. so I can splice it in later. Okay. Oh, by the way, I studied. Um, <laughs> I studied phonetics, so I should be able to. Ooh. Ah, ah. I'll be like, so at 1078, Thank it's you. request immediate backup. And you'll be waiting, and you're going to come around the corner, and quickly, you know, fast, but not crazy fast, just get into this. <laughs> it caught me off guard. <laughs> get into the scene as quickly as you can. Okay. Come on back. Now, I'm gonna get, I'm gonna be down there, okay? I don't really want it to fit in, or rather blend in, with uh, today's movies. I want it to look almost like it, it could have come out in you know the late 80s early 90s and I, I mean like technically it has that look I uh, I almost wanted to film the film it on like an old VHS camcorder just to you know just to be that different um, but I settled for 1080 uh, you know uh, instead of 4k for example you know I could have filmed this thing in 4k but not only you know, I don't want to deal with those large file sizes when I edit this thing. Um, but also the look of, I like the look of 1080. It looks good, you know, and really, can we really tell the difference? You know, but I still like, you know, VHS quality. So the look of the film is, is very important and it's an intentional that it's, uh, 1080.
because I, I know a lot of people are going to ask, you know, it's 2024, why didn't you film it in 4K? I didn't want to. And that's, that's good. That's probably a good place to stop because I was just rambling. Cut, perfect. Yeah, it was good. Very good. <laughs>